Okay, hey guys, we're here again with Nicole, and now we're going to talk about how Bitcoin was created. Nicole wanted me to try to explain to her the best I can, even though I may not do a good job. And obviously, you guys can leave comments too. Maybe Nicole will be reading them, so maybe you can explain it better. But anyways, so the way it was created, it was created in 2009. And the reason why it was created is, do you remember that financial recession? You know how like everything, the bank started to collapse in 2008? Do you remember that stuff, Nicole? Oh, yeah, that stock market thing. Yeah, okay. So basically the reason why they created it is they're upset at central banks. Do you know what central banks are, like the Federal Reserve? Yeah. And so they can technically print out whatever amount of money they want. You know, They can create more dollars if they want to out of thin air. And that creates something called inflation. Do you know what inflation is? Yep. Okay, what's inflation? It's where you have too much of something, or it's where the price of um, the value just starts to go down. Yes, good job. I'm very yeah. impressed, Nicole. I'm very, very impressed. So yes, inflation yeah, is where your money, awesome. your currency <laughs> loses value. And the easiest way I can explain inflation is like the dollar menu. Remember how there used to be a dollar menu and now it's like going to be oh, two dollars? Yeah, and it's like now going to be a two dollar menu. And like back in the day, like it used to be like 80 cents for a hamburger. Then it used to be like 50 cents, 25, you know? So like the price of food keeps going up because your dollar is becoming weaker. You know, $1 is not as valuable now as it was a hundred years ago. Does that, does that yeah. make sense? And so that <clears throat> you're completely right. So inflation is where basically where your money gets devalued. But the thing is, is that people in America, we have very little inflation. That means like our currency usually devalues about 2% a year. So if we had $100 next year, it's worth about $98. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. But the problem is in Venezuela, or we're going to use the country that my parents are from, Iran, they have really bad inflation. And I'll tell you how bad it is. So I actually went to Iran. And when I went there, it was only for two weeks. And by the way, it's now worse because of, you know, the embargo, but like, one dollar was worth two thousand Iranian dollars, and in two weeks it became twenty five hundred. So could you imagine? You have a hundred dollars in your checking account, and then in two weeks it's only worth seventy five. So wow. that's the problem. Yeah. So we don't have this problem because if you live in like a top twenty, top fifty economy slash country, you don't have this issue. But smaller countries have this problem because their central banks, their federal reserves. They keep printing out too much money and then all of a sudden the value of the money goes down. And so people are like, okay, well, how can I like store value but not have to go through a bank? And that's why they created Bitcoin. And the whole idea is the way the coins are created, it's through code. And there's only a certain amount of code coins that you can own. And obviously it's all fractional. Do you understand how like it's, it can be split up into fractions? Mm -hmm. you, you got that, right? Yeah. And so, yeah, I mean, basically they're trying to have this be a store of value that cannot, you know, there's no central bank that can print out more Bitcoin. There's just a fixed amount in the code and then there will be no more. Well, who creates these? So it was created by a group of programmers and the guy who kind of gets all the credit was this, this guy who no one knows who he really is. He used an alias because it was like made on computer forums. His name is Satoshi Nakamoto. And oh, that doesn't God. mean he's Japanese because like I said, like it could have been me. Like I could have been Satoshi Nakamoto and I, back in 2009 when I was going to college at UCI, I could have been on the forum telling people, hey, Let's create this thing. And then a bunch of these developers on this forum, they started to work together to, act, to create the actual Bitcoin network. Okay, it, no one really knows who it is, right? No one really knows who it is, but there's still like a group of original founders. And some of them have come forward, but the original, original founder who actually has like, I believe, uh, close to a million Bitcoins, he hasn't come forward. And I it makes kind of sense him. because he... Because if you own a million bitcoins, you can really like influence the price of Bitcoin because you can either not sell it at all, which that's what he's done. The guy, whoever owns this a million bitcoins, it's, it hasn't been moving because there's a public ledger. You can kind of see where, you know, large transactions are going. But um, yeah, we don't know. Like most of the people that own Bitcoin, like they have these really, really large wallets and you can kind of like see if they're making any moves or whatever. And when you own that much of anything, you can manipulate the price what a dick <laughs> well no he's awesome because he created a way for us to store value where the government can't control and i'll make a new video to kind of explain that to you so i'm going to stop this video and we'll go into that video